What is up guys, Politics Gaming here, and today we're doing a brand new video about Super Power 3. This is going to be a devlog diary update on Super Power 3. We're going to be talking about scenarios today. If you guys have been wondering where I have been and why I have not been streaming, it's mainly because I just had COVID and I just got over COVID. So um, I, I, I'm, I'm just now getting over it and I'm still having some issues, especially with breathing and coughing. Um, so it, it's kind of been a little difficult to even try the stream, but I am going to, I'm, I'm doing this video now and then we're doing, uh, um, a lot more in the future. So go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new and we will go ahead and get into this dev diary. I'm really excited to get into this and read about superpower three and, uh, I'll make sure to do more of these in the future. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you have not, because I'm going to be posting, uh, uh superpower 3 updates to this channel whenever they do come out and then uh we are also planning an interview with the ceo of golem labs in the future so go ahead and again subscribe so you don't miss that interview so starting off this devlog last christmas we left you with a little sneak peek of our scenarios list for superpower 3 and that screenshot that we saw on the steam page some of you may have seen them some of you may have not so uh but there they are uh and now we are ready to talk about them a little bit more so let's go and if you didn't see it we'll put it back up for your little spying eyes and so we're gonna look at this picture in a second because this actually gives us a little preview to more scenarios that we're gonna have uh in the future um, and then said from the start for superpower three, it was clear that we wanted to make scenarios and we wanted lots of them. So if you actually remember in superpower two, we had like a handful of scenarios. It was like the Iraq invasion. Um, it was the, it was like rebuilding the, the USSR. It was kind of like easy, medium, intermediate and, uh, difficult. And it was just like, again, it was like a really weird handful of scenarios. It was like less than 10 scenarios. But in this one, we're actually seeing a very good amount of scenarios here. Uh, so he says, but we wanted, but we, but we wanted all of them to be realistic. Why? Because the world knows, uh, because of the world news around us for the last couple of years now, we are interesting to say at least. From presidential candidates and elections in the United States to everything happening in China, the developments in the Middle East and Russia, Iran's nuclear, nuclear program, and the effects of the global pandemic on Europe, we had a lot to choose from since the beginning of our development for Superpower 3. Um, and just like that, like remember that the last time that they made this game, like in, in Superpower 2, came out after, like the year after we invaded Iraq. That is how long it has been. The last time that there was ever a superpower game released, the United States had just went to war in Iraq. That is how old this game is. From the start, we told you that we created a team of researchers. If you don't know what we're talking about, here's a video's link about it. I will link this video in the description. It's essentially a interview with most of their uh, uh, staff. Um, it's a very interesting interview. I will link it in the description of this video. Um, they have had, they have been assembling data and information daily since then. Believe us, it made for a large amount of data. After the research part, they had to divide and organize the data collected so our artists and programmers could make a game about it. At the same time, the researchers also had to create a list of playable scenarios based on real life events and catastrophes. We already had about 20 scenarios, 10 tutorials, and we're still creating other ones now because the news won't stop. All of this will allow you to connect real world events in the news and play them in game. Yes, some scenarios were cre created with a little more quote fantasy, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the Taiwan invasion or something like that, or uh, maybe there's something else that they're not telling us. But they will always be relatable with what's happening in the real world, and if you prefer to play sandbox and do everything that you want or take a break from the scenarios, will be you will also be able to do that. Great thing to see that they're doing the sandbox in-game. Um, and then, in that case, you will have the option to choose any country in the world and any gameplay that you have in mind. All categories are at your disposition, politics, economy, military, and demography. It's all up to you. Finally, when it launches, you'll be able to create your own scenarios too. And I hope, and I actually, there will be a, 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 sand, a, a, a workshop fe feature in the game. So we will be able to make our own scenarios and then release them to uh, other people in game. We, get a, we also got a screenshot here that we're going to look at in a second. When you enter the game, you will have to choose your own scenario first. From the get-go, you will have access to a short resume of each scenario available. We tried to make them brief and interesting for you, and then you will see all flags of the countries you can play in that selected scenario. 
When clicking on the country, the success and failure conditions will change accordingly and show up on the right uh, scenario menu. And on top of that, we made a profile for each country and every scenario in the middle part. So it looks like that this one, oh, we actually have to zoom in here. Uh, this is called One Belt, One Road. China must continue its economic expansion through the world by securing its supplies. In 2013, the Belt and Road project was set up based on the economic model, uh, model of the old Silk Road with the aim to reach Europe. You can play as China, Ethiopia, India, Kazakhstan, or Nigeria in this game. And then you, here's your profile. So you have, uh, so you're clicking Kazakhstan, for example. You have a total population of 19 million people, it looks like. You have uh, this spy network that we're looking at here. You have 65% approval, 60% uh, stability, $206 billion in your GDP, and a balance of $44 billion. And then you also see that we have uh, sectors right here. So maybe uh, for, uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary that we're looking at. Um, so that's going to be interesting. I hope that's what that is. It's primary, secondary, and tertiary sectors. Um, and then we have military rank. We are 40th in the world. We have no nuclear weapons. And then we also have objectives. We have successes, success conditions, liberalize Kazakhstan's economy and bring economic philosophy to 70% or higher. So we can bring economic philosophy. So does that mean we, we can invest in education and then bring uh like everyone to understand economics or something like that um bring or economic prosperity is that what they're trying to say maybe that's what they're trying to say i bet they're i bet philosophy prosperity uh reduce corruption spending by 20 percent increase infrastructure budget of kazakhstan to meet demand Increase gas exports of China to 25%. Oh, 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 interesting. Increase gas exports to China by 25%. Says it twice. Now increase to, at Kazakhstan total fuel exports to China by 25%. So does that mean right here that we can actually increase trade to a very specific country by a specific number? I mean, there, there's going to have to be a little bit of uh, micromanagement there. But if we can do that... By, by saying like, okay, we want to increase trade relations with China, for example, and then we can get, we can increase gas exports to China by 25%. So we can invest in the gas export industry. And then uh, that, okay, that's actually going to be very interesting uh, to do. Uh, and then reduce corruption spending uh, by 20%. So we still have the corruption in there. Uh, failure conditions, uh, corruption costs increased by 25%, war declared with China or war declared with Russia, because you're obviously going to lose those. So we have 18 scenarios so far, and we can actually read a couple of them uh, before uh, before uh, we're done with this video. With this profile, you'll be able to see early on what's our starting point in each department, the politics, economy, demography, and military gameplay for every country. For example, in a scenario about the new Silk Road, Silk Road of China, while playing China, your population approval will already be 79% from the start of the game. That means you'll be able to be in a quite good place on a domestic stability and production productivity point of view. You'll be able to make a couple of changes, take difficult decisions, it's up to you. You can already plan it a little bit with the profile you see in the scenario me menu. Otherwise, you, uh, you'll be happy to know that scenarios will be available in the single player or multiplayer mode. Okay. That's going to be interesting. And multiplayer playable countries will be pre-selected for the players and each of you will have a different objective. That objective will be what can be compatible or not. Also in multiplayer mode, there will be scenario, there will be roles for the management of nuclear weapons. So you better control what kind of games you want to play with your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on. You know, you know, you want some South Korean guy coming in and just nuking the hell out of y'all. The kinds of objectives, success or failure options that will be available that will vary a lot from one to another. But if I tell you a few examples, you could have to you could have to increase the education budget at a certain percentage, sign an alliance treaty with an important country, or maintain a government support above a percentage. So this one is general. I'm gonna say that's general. Signing an alliance treaty with an important country, I'm bet I'm betting. That is for the Taiwan uh, China scenario where you're going to play as Taiwan and then you're going to try to sign an alliance treaty with the United States before China invades you or maintain the government support above a certain percentage. Maybe you're playing as China or something such as in Hades crisis 
scenario to succeed, you would have to bring human development index at 65%. And if you fail, your relations decreased with other countries. Like we said, making scenarios realistic was one of our priorities, but other priority was accessibility. We wanted players to be able to easily create scenarios and share them on Steam Workshop too. So again, that is very confirmed that we're going to be getting workshop support. Uh, even better, the scenarios are simple word files that everyone can make and share. Okay. Uh, there will be no complicated things. The AI can even adapt itself to all new scenarios that you might add. After the, the release, it's clear for us that the scenarios option will continue to grow even after the release of the game since there will be more news coming out every day. We will continue to update this feature as time passes, so it's up always up to date with the real world. We cannot wait for you to see all of them and maybe even add them. We're really excited about this part because we know it adds to the gameplay for players, and since it's too, it'll be so realistic, it's even more exciting. For today, our first dev diary, we thought we could show you a glimpse of our scenario menu in Superpower 3. So we want you to know, what do you think? Are you excited for this game? Uh, what do you think? Uh, which one do you think you will try first? You will, try, will you try an easy one or a difficult one? Do you have any suggestion for a scenario already in mind? Tell us. Uh, and then next dev diary, next time we will uh, return with the topic of the character's creation tool, talking more about the uh, starting conditions, the rules, and how those can shape each game in Superpower 3. That idea of customization came to us because the players of Superpower 2 community were doing and some still do role-playing games while playing. All right. I, <laughs> I'm really happy that they actually gave this a shout out because that is very true. There's still people doing it and I still do it. If you guys have not tried these role-playing games on Superpower 3, they are amazing. That is what actually got me into Superpower 2 at first, whenever I first got it, because I figured out, oh, these guys do role-playing games where we basically, you know, call call myself President PG and then um uh just kind of like uh it it just kind of role-play yourself out. It's 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 a very interesting thing to do. <laughs> but do not be afraid that aspect of the game just isn't cosmetic. It brings important gameplay effect. Until we're back to give you more details, stay safe. And that is the end of the dev diary. I'll go ahead and show you guys the next screenshot right here. All right, so what we are looking at right here is essentially the screenshot we were talking about earlier. And we'll go ahead and look at the scenarios that we're looking at. And then so we the first one that we got to see was One Belt, One Road. That is essentially um the china silk road initiative that uh we're going to be able to play through in in this and so then on the second one we have scottish independence we have the independence of catalonia we have the arab spring we have this says the must contain uh some sort of crisis to follow purchasing power oh it's the uh it's the yellow vests this is the yellow vest movement in france so you get to play as france so you get to play as france and uh suppress or just deal with the yellow vest movement that's going to be very interesting so we can actually deal with internal struggles in the game and then on the third on the eighth one we have iran nuclear production so we can uh deal with iran uh as they're developing nuclear weapons iraqi kurdistan independence the myanmar dictatorship uh, relations between the United States and North Korea. Uh, we have the Crimean crisis. We have the Haiti crisis. It looks like we have the Turkish Neo-Ottoman Islamic Empire. So we can actually reform the Ottoman Empire in Superpower 3. Brazil dictatorship. So Brazil emerges as a powerful military dictatorship. So we can go back to uh, early... 19th early to mid 19th century uh uh brazilian history and make brazil a dictatorship again we also obviously have the uh new and improved rebuild the ussr because that's obviously still a thing um and then you the usa dictatorship democracy overthrown a new dictatorship in the united states um and then we have the mad empire the mad empire i don't know if that says mad or that says something else but it says uh mad empire and then the very last one which is probably going to be the very first one that i get to try out uh is taiwan invasion <laughs> And 
that's going to be a very exciting one to play because I really am passionate about Taiwan. So I'm going to be playing that one. If you guys are interested in it, I'm gonna I'm I'm interested in um maybe the one belt one road. Uh, Arab Spring it seems like contain an Arab Spring 2.0. So that's going to be, I guess maybe that can be interesting. Oh, the, the yellow vest one is going to be also interesting because I want to see what internal struggles we can deal with in Superpower 3. Um, and then we also have Taiwan Invasion. Yeah. And and then I think also Turkey's um, uh, Neo-Ottoman Islamic Empire would be interesting. As well as the, uh, the tense Crimea situation, the Crimea's crisis uh, is going to be a very interesting one as well. Well, if you guys like that, go ahead and leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you guys want to see more Super Power 3 content, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss anything whenever I do post it on YouTube, whenever I do make updates for Super Power 3. I'm going to be following this game extremely closely, so make sure you follow this channel for any updates on Super Power 3. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that, that interview with uh, Golem Lab CEO Jean-René Couture um, on this channel. I'm really excited to do that. So again, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Thank you guys so much for watching this devlog with me, and I will be back for more devlogs whenever they are released. Again, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.